Everything that's happened in the past 48 hours just goes to prove that you don't know what's gonna happen next in the landscape of college football. All I gotta say about this is what a time to be alive. What a time. To start out this video, I'm gonna ask each and every single one of you a question. Can somebody please in the comment section explain to me why in the crap the transfer portal has gone complete haywire? It's so weird to me. I swear these players do it on purpose. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, here's exactly what I'm talking about. We'll have four, maybe sometimes five days in a row, won't hear a single bit of news about transfer portal stuff. And then boom, out of nowhere, you have all these big time players and big time recruits that enter the portal on one day in less than 24 hours. It's crazy to me because you'll either see a lot of players enter the portal or a lot of players commit just like that. We got so much stuff to talk about, including one of your playoff teams, Washington, they just got a new quarterback. To go on top of that, one of USC's better wide receivers, he entered the portal, and then Colorado, they just picked up a big time wide receiver. It's chaos. And whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. You didn't think I was gonna forget to mention it, did you? We gotta talk about what happened with Arkansas's quarterback, KJ Jefferson. There's many more things we gotta talk about. I'm excited, hope you guys are excited as well. Strap in, buckle up, get you a snack, get you a popcorn, it's gonna be a good video, but all right, man, blah, 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 shut the crap out. Now that for the dope, let's get it. All right, first things first, let's start on with this because this happened later. This is the, I guess you'd say, oldest news up until this point, and that is no other than Vanderbilt star wide receiver, one of the top wide receivers in the portal, He's announced he's going to Colorado. I know a lot of people are going to say, huh, yeah, Vanderbilt wide receiver. That ain't a big time pickup, and you're sadly mistaken if you believe that. Will Shepard was one of the best wide receivers in all of the transfer portal, so I can't emphasize enough how huge this is for Vanderbilt, Shadur Sanders, and Coach Prime. I'm not even going to hype him up. I'll just show you his numbers right here. They speak for himself. Over 2,000 receiving yards and 21 touchdowns. Not too shabby. That is huge for Colorado. I didn't see too many people talking about it, but it's definitely something to keep your eyes on. I wouldn't be shocked if he has over 12, 1,300 yards next year. Keep your eyes on that, and that's also going to help out Travis Hunter from not having to play too much offense and defense. And I can't spend too much time talking about every single one of these things because we got a lot to go over, so let's get a move on. This was some of your bigger news because, well, he's going to a top 14. We all know or should know Mississippi State's quarterback, Will Rogers. He's played there, what is it, man, four or five years? It wasn't working out. And he said, all right, I'm hitting the portal. And I got to be honest with y'all. I didn't think any big time schools were going to go after him. And when I say big time, let me clarify. I'm talking about top 15 schools. Why do I believe that? Well, to just be brutally honest with all of you, because I didn't think he was good enough. And I still don't think he is. Just because they went after him doesn't mean I think he's good enough. But hey, maybe they see something in his game. I'm just really concerned with the turnover problems because he's good against mediocre competition. But every single time he played teams like Alabama, just wasn't that good. Granted, you could chalk that up to, well, hey, Mississippi State doesn't have a good supporting cast, and I could hear you out. But the bottom line is, and that's really besides the point, he entered the portal, and it's official. He's going to Washington. I'm curious, if you're a Washington fan or, hey, just a college football fan, what do you think of this? I told you how I feel about it. I'm not necessarily a fan of it, but... I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked if it worked out. Let me put it that way. It could work out, but I definitely think it is a drop off from Michael Penix Jr. But hey, who knows? Because remember, Penix Jr. wasn't viewed as a top quarterback when he transferred from Indiana, and he's turned out amazing. <laughs> I was going through the comment section, and somebody said, how on earth does this guy still have eligibility? And hey, I'm in the same boat as you. There's been so many players in the portal, especially with Dylan Gabriel, where my mouth is dropped, and I'm like, dude, how does this guy have eligibility? It's because we got the whole super senior BS, graduate senior BS, and COVID year BS. It's just a mess. Don't even get me started on a rant about that because you know how I can be. I don't like it. Hmm, what about this comment? Washington won't be contending for anything next season. And I just not thought about this too. Remember, Washington will be in the Big Ten next year. What do y'all think about this? Does Washington have a chance to continue to be a top 10 team or are they gonna fall off next year? Let me know. Moving along here, I'll throw this in there. We already talked a little bit about this. Alabama's wide receiver who caught the legendary pass in the 2021 Iron Bowl. Not the most recent one, that was Isaiah Bond, but in 2021 from Bryce Young, Jacoy Brooks, he's heading to Louisville. This is a former five-star recruit. He was a stud at Alabama when he was healthy. And let me throw this in there. The only reason it didn't work out at Alabama, guys, is because he was always injured. He couldn't get healthy, and he kept getting buried on the depth chart, and it happens. Big pickup for Louisville since we already talked about that. We're going to move on and check this out. This one definitely caught my attention. USC's wide receiver, Mario Williams. Remember, this is the same kid who transferred with Kayla Williams from Oklahoma, who was supposed to have a breakout season for USC, 
He's now entered the portal. Dare I say he was somewhat disappointing this year for USC? Is that fair to say? It was a really weird situation because USC fans, they don't even seem too mad about losing this guy. And I don't blame him because he was about, what, the third or fourth wide receiver on the depth chart? And I think some people would say at times he was a fourth or fifth option. It just never seemed like a great fit there. I thought it was going to work out because I thought he had the chemistry at Kayla Williams, but guess not. As to where he's going to wind up, don't know. And I still don't think he's a wide receiver one, but I think he's a good slot wide receiver. It's just really hard to evaluate this situation because it's so odd to me that a wide receiver had a somewhat disappointment of a season and he didn't produce that much when his quarterback was freaking Caleb Williams, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. And I know some people are going to bring up, well, if he can have a good season with Caleb Williams, why would I believe he's going to have a good season elsewhere? I agree. But you also got though in there, he was not the main target at USC. He was not wide receiver one or even I'd say wide receiver two. So there's that, and I don't know too much about it. The only thing I've heard right now is that Texas, they might be going after him. Whether that happened, don't know, but I think any team and every team should go after him. Continuing along here, check on this tweet. Somebody just sent it to me. Next year's Big Ten Championship could be a quarterback duel between Washington's Will Rogers and Oregon's Dylan Gabriel. Wow, I didn't even think of that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Imagine telling somebody three, four years ago that Will Rogers and Dylan Gabriel, if this were to happen, we're going to be facing off of the Big Ten Championship. Remember, three to four years ago, Dill Gabriel was at UCF, right? Yeah, UCF. I was about to say USF. No, no, no. UCF. And Will Rogers was at Mississippi State still. Imagine some random dude walking up to you at the gas station saying, hey, man, in three to four years, Will Rogers and Dylan Gabriel, they're going to battle it off in the Big Ten Championship. Like, what? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. You can thank the conference realignment for that and the transfer portal and NIL. Because you best believe Will Rogers and Dylan Gabriel, they're not going to Washington and Oregon for free. They're getting some money. All I got to say about this is what a time to be alive. What a time. Moving along here, though, to arguably the main topic, the biggest news in all the transfer portal, Arkansas star quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC, KJ Jefferson, he has announced that he is entering the portal. <laughs> Dude, Twitter's so funny. Somebody said this man has unlimited... <laughs> Ability. I swear, it feels like KJ Jefferson been playing quarterback for Arkansas since 2016. Bro, I was in college. I was watching him in 2007 at Arkansas. All right, all right, all right. Let's log in. Let's get down to business. On a serious note, I, I'm reading some of the comments here. It doesn't seem like people are shocked. Was this expected? Maybe I've just been out of the loop on this situation with KJ Jefferson, but I did not expect him to leave Arkansas. I thought he was going to stay there. I'm just really baffled by this because he seemed like a guy that loved Arkansas football and he was always going to play his college football career there. And it's really head-scratching to me because I'm not too sure what school would want to go after him, and I'm also not sure where he would want to go because he probably thinks highly of himself, rightfully so. Dude, I love KJ Jefferson. Heading into the season, I had him in my top three for SEC quarterbacks. And I know everybody's going to say, well, Matt, he never put up good numbers. And Matt, Arkansas sucked this year and he wasn't that great. Okay, yes, you're right. But you got to take into account that Arkansas, the team sucks, not KJ Jefferson. That Arkansas team this year was just bad. That is the only word to use. They were struggling mightily, but I look at it like this. I firmly believe if you were to put KJ Jefferson in Alabama, he would have had a great season, and he would have got Heisman love. Anybody that actually knows ball knows if you surround K.J. Jefferson with weapons, he can be special. But that's the problem. At Arkansas, number one, he didn't have weapons, and you won't have weapons anytime soon because it's Arkansas. They just simply can't compete with teams like Georgia and Alabama. Not yet, at least. Maybe one day they'll get there, but not anytime soon. What about this? Somebody in the comment section said dibs, game cock, and now that I think about it, that seems like a pretty good fit to me going to South Carolina. And here's my thing with K.J. Jefferson. I'm just assuming he wants to change the scenery, and I don't blame him for it because who would want to play for Arkansas right now? I think if South Carolina can add KJ Jefferson, and let me throw this in there. This is a win-win situation, a win for KJ and a win for Shane Beamer. I think South Carolina fans would welcome him in with open arms, and I think KJ Jefferson would love it there. But like I was saying, I think if they do get him, they can win anywhere from, mm, let's just say, six games at the least to nine games at the most, maybe I don't know. I think 10's pushing it. We'll just say 9. And I'm curious. Let's pull up his numbers and stats to give you somewhat of a perspective. And also, I want some perspective myself. 2021 completed over 67% of his passes. 2,600 passing yards. 21 touchdowns to only 4 INTs. That's great. I'm not going to show you his rushing stats because every year he rushed for right around 600 yards. 
I'm just here to show you his passing stats. We all know he can run. In 2022, carbon copy pace of 2021. Increased his touchdowns to 24 and only had one more intercept. See, look at this touchdown interception ratio. This is great. 24 to 5. And most recently in 2023, was a bit of a drop off, but I'm really not holding too much against him there. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I know this guy can play. It was just a down year for him and that entire Arkansas team. Completed 64% of his passes, 19 touchdowns to eight INTs. But getting back on track here with where he might go, let's just say he doesn't want to go to South Carolina or maybe they don't want him. As to what other schools would be in his ballpark and range, here's my two cents on that. I'm using the same logic I did for Will Rogers and I'm actually higher on KJ Jefferson than Will Rogers. As of what I'm speaking right now, I'd rather have KJ Jefferson as my quarterback than Will Rogers. I would say right now, I don't see too many top 15 teams going after KJ Jefferson or even top 20 teams. I think you're going to see some of those fringe top 25, top 35, top 40 teams go after him. But here's the real question with all this. What does KJ Jefferson want to do and how good does he think he is? Does he think he's good enough to play for a top 10, top 12 team, top 15 team, or does he just want to go somewhere else where he knows he can be the starter? I have no idea if you know anything about this or you just have an opinion, let us know in the comments section. I'd love to hear what you got to say. I could talk about that for 15 more minutes, but last but not least, check this out. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. So two days ago, Alabama's offensive tackle, Elijah Pritchard, he entered the transfer portal. Okay, no big deal whatsoever. But check this out. Yesterday, he announces he's no longer transferring from Alabama, and here's what he stated, quote unquote. Transferring is not in my best interest. I apologize for any and all inconveniences. I'm 100% locked in. Roll Tide in all caps. I then speak for everybody when I say this. What in the crap happened and what changed his mind? Because it's not like he just said, oh yeah, I decided to change my mind. I'm staying in Alabama. No, no, no. He was like, yep, I made a big mistake. I'm locked in. Roll Tide. I don't know. It seems like he had a come to Jesus moment or actually, now that I think about it, I think that check might have cleared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably what happened. That check hit his direct deposit. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Roll time, baby. I'm coming back. Hey, man, it is what it is. You know how we do things at Bama. We make things happen. Just like they say, a win is a win. There's many more things I could talk about. There's so much stuff going on in the college football world, but those are some of the main things going on. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below about that.